It all began in darkness. I awoke to a world of pain. A throbbing in my head pounded on my temples. Suddenly I saw a white light approaching me. I saw a human form within that light. An angel. The shining light radiated something soothing. Eric. The angel spoke to me. Eric, it's time. The angel disappeared, and the hammering became more intense. Faster, slowly, my sight returned. A rhythm and different sounds which slowly coalesced to become music. The darkness slowly gave way to blurry surroundings and focused on regaining my orientation. All around me I could see people, bodies twitching, moving to the rhythm of the music. I felt sick, but at least I could move again. I needed to run some water over my head. That would do me good. stand and the nausea was getting stronger. Gathering the last of my strength, I dragged myself on. in my head veiled everything. The angel was gone, and so was the pain. It was time to find out who I was, or what I was doing here. Chances were the bouncer had seen me come in. Maybe he could shed some light on the subject. Get out of my face! We don't need an audience. Hi. Yeah? What do you want? I wanted to ask. I couldn't get another word out. The sight of his weapon woke some kind of memory. Hey. Hey, man. You okay? Yeah, yeah. It's okay. I'm doing fine. Did I come to the club alone, or was someone with me? No idea. My shift had only just begun. My boss was watching the door before that. Where can I find him? Well, he's sure to be hanging around here somewhere. Ask at the bar for Tom. That flashback had felt pretty damn realistic, even if I didn't completely understand it. What should I make of it? I made my way back into the club to find the head of security. Maybe he would be able to help me. Hi. I'll have a... You'll have a Bloody Mary. House style. Who said I wanted a Bloody Mary? Believe me, I know exactly what you want. Do you know where Tom is? Tom? Yes, I do happen to know where Tom is. Head upstairs and you'll find him. Good luck. Okay, catch you later. Yes. See you later. The stuff tasted disgusting. and It had a strange aftertaste. However, my body saw it differently and a pleasant warmth spread through me. Hey man, you okay? Have we met? Not directly, but don't we all know one another somehow? I mean, we're practically one big family. I have no idea what you're talking about. Shit, man, you really don't know, do you? My memory is a bit... 
foggy at the moment. <laughs> sure, whatever. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Look, we can help you, man. I mean, I know someone who can. Follow me, dude. I'll take you to her. I'm sure she'll help you. Her name's Rose, and she knows more about that stuff than the rest of us. Yes? Hey! Hey man, you were really lucky to meet me. There's some of us out there that are real bad news, dude. They would have just ripped your head off or something. Don't worry, we're almost there. By the way, Rose, she owns the sanctuary. Hi, Tom. I see you brought a guest. Nice to see you again. Was the drink okay? Hey, Rose. This dude has, like, got no idea what's happening. Can't remember a damn thing. And he's here all alone? Looks like it. Hello, I'm still here. Could you tell me what's going on? I have no idea what you're talking about. You're a... Vampire. A vampire, like Tom and me. <laughs> yeah, right. Thanks for the drink. And no offense, but I'll just be going now. Tom, show him. Hey, neat trick, man. What? You automatically resorted to your vampire abilities out of pure reflex. Not bad. You seem to be a natural. Thank you, Tom. I'll take care of our guests now. You can go back. Yo, later, man. So? My name is Eric. Eric Bain. Well, Eric, I'm Rose. I hope our little demonstration convinced you. I don't think I have any alternative. That is correct. Right now, you also have a much bigger problem you need to take care of. You are not yet a fully-fledged vampire, and that has some drawbacks. Tell me more about vampires. What would you like to know? How come nobody knows that vampires really exist? Because we're very careful not to attract attention. Do you think people out there would be happy if they knew that we're living amongst them? We can't be satisfied by synthetic or animal blood. Believe me, I've tried it. No, we need real blood, and we need it from a living person. We are powerful, Eric. You are powerful, but we are not invulnerable. Bullets can harm and even kill us. However, there are just a few of us, but we have plenty of conflict within our society. So we use our power and influence to keep people in the dark. There are vampires out there who have built economic empires and control the media. They ensure that our existence remains secret. Tell me about yourself. Me? Well, it's been about 10 years since I was a normal human. I own this club, and I look after the young vampires, such as yourself. But I don't really want to talk about myself right now. Maybe some other time. Can you tell me something about the vampires in the sanctuary? Yes, I could tell you a little something, but that would be kind of inappropriate, wouldn't it? It's best if you speak with them yourself. Tom, you've already met. He is my head of security. The Kruger twins also work here in the club. April is behind the bar. I assume you remember her. June is our DJ. If you want to know more about them, I suggest you speak with them directly. Let's talk about something else. Gladly. How come I'm not a full vampire yet? If a vampire drinks your blood and kills you in the process, you will turn into a vampire yourself. However, that alone does not complete the transformation. First, you have to drink your creator's blood. 
Only then will you be a full-fledged vampire. And since I don't know who made me a vampire, that's kind of a problem. Exactly. A vampire doesn't just create another vampire for no reason. We try to hide our very existence from humans. And every newcomer increases the risk of being discovered. Your creator put us all at risk when he just left you behind. No vampire would willingly call down the wrath of all the others upon himself. I suppose something must have happened to him. And what happens if I don't drink his blood? You really don't want to know. I have no idea exactly what happens when someone becomes a vampire. But if you do not get the right blood, your brain starts to deteriorate. You will become more and more of an animal until you finally lose all of your humanity. We call these pitiful creatures ghouls. Believe me, you want to avoid becoming one of those creatures at all costs. Do I have any options? Ah, yes. The blood of an ancient and powerful vampire can theoretically replace your creator's blood. But I'm talking about vampires that have been in the business for several decades. You won't find anyone like that in the sanctuary. But I do know of someone. His name is John Blooming. He's the director of the Harding Museum downtown. Blooming is not a nice man. He's not likely to give you his blood voluntarily. It's not as if I have much of a choice. That is certainly true. However, you should talk to Tom before you head out. He can give you a few tips.